trees live by intercepting energy gradients that flow from above as light and uh, from below as nourishment through their roots in the ground. Artists live exactly the same way by intercepting energy gradients that flow from above as money or information and below and from below as nourishment through their roots in, in a ground. In uh, new open fields, well, they're, they're invaded by trees that are intolerant to shade. As the fields fill up to be forests, species of trees that are progressively more shade tolerant become dominant. Even in full, full sunlight, these uh, shade-tolerant trees grow more slowly than shade-intolerant trees. So the artist is part of the world. The world of mutually originating and supporting interrelationships. His art both contributes to and depends upon all things and all relationships which are coexistent with it. Trees in a new open field grow leaves in diverse directions. Later generations in that uh, field, well, the trees mix leaf orientations. For example, an outward show of regularity may have a random interior. In an old forest, leaves align in ordered planes to better compete for light with the surrounding trees. himself when creating from himself apart from art. He is the most complete artist when his work is identified as the whole of art. There's a contradiction here. He, he cannot create work which is wholly apart from and uh, entirely a part of art. Each work of art engages this contradiction. Interesting. A tree's most efficient use of light casts enough shade to prevent more shade-adapted trees from growing under it. But it also prevents the growth of its own seeds. It is impossible for the tree to both regenerate continuously and to be shady enough to prevent invasion.
continental platforms are heaved up by the Earth's internal forces and immediately begin to be eroded into plains and mountains. These mountains are, are broken down into boulders and pebbles and finally flow to the sea as sand and silt. Major adaptive possibilities made available by the artist's new forms are rapidly exploited in a similar way. These ideas, with the power of organizing great quantities of energy, tend to be subdivided more and more by other people until they are finally altered entirely and dissipated until they cannot organize any energy at all. As a tree grows against gravity, the energy costs of lengthening horizontal branches 
of the same length as vertical ones increase because of the need for thicker and harder wood uh, to support the horizontal branches. The ratio of height to width in trees increases with age. adjusts himself to the effects of art, and he also affects art. The more he affects art so as to reduce his need to adjust, the less he risks his own dissolution. does things through art that increase value. To do some things requires other things to be undone, which decreases their value. Each, uh, each artwork engages that contradiction. tree in the forest is partly determined by the shape of the space it filled. Its shape is part of its strategy for better light interception in relation to the strategies of neighboring trees. Possible is partly determined by facing the possibility common to all other artists and then making all that art could possibly be. Many trees are born, but very few grow to maturity because all growth is at the expense of their neighbors uh, to a certain distance related to their size.
tree's capacity for self-reproduction changes during its lifetime. In youth, it produces only vegetative tissue, while in middle age, it flowers and produces its greatest amounts of seed. In old age, it produces less seed, and its resistance to disease and ability to heal its wounds decreases until it dies. adjust their leaf arrangements for optimum light. Uh, the most dimly lit branches may prune their own leaves. Less dimly lit branches uh, are short with dense uniform patterns of leaves, while well lit branches may produce leaves that were never there before. At the, at the seashore, dune grasses stabilize the blowing sand, and uh, generations of collected dead grasses enrich it, enabling more vegetation to grow. Each generation tempers the topsoil more successfully than its predecessors, until finally trees and perhaps a whole forest will grow in the sheltered hollows. And the artist is continually losing the equilibrium of his inner unity and recovering it by including in his art that which was previously outside him. To maintain his equilibrium is to be not at rest, but continually in motion. Stephanie Weinshell.